Hello, hello everybody. Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. Today is Sunday. So Sunday where I hope to inspire you to sew on a Sunday or any day. Any day. Just break out the sewing machine, some fabric, and let's sew. <laughs> All right. There is a lot of you here already. Look at that. Um, so we have Nancy, Mary, Leah, Martha, Francis, Evelyn, Vicki, Tamla, Nancy, Robin, Yo Patty G, uh, Tony, uh, Mary, Robin, Patricia, Gerilyn, Heather, um, Elena, Donna, Teresa Louise. Sandy. Oh no, it jumped. It jumped far. There's like, you know, a hundred and something of you guys here. So it's going quick. <laughs> uh, let's see. Linda, Tamala, Tracy, another Tracy, both spelled differently. Um, Delia, Robin, Judy, uh, Glenda, Gigi Quilt, Zella, Colette, and so many more, Kim, Chris, hello everybody, welcome. And if I missed your name, I'm sorry, but it scrolls quick. Once it gets going and the video is ready and I can see my own chat, it goes Bloop! just like that. So today, as the title says, we're gonna make a giant pineapple block. Actually, it's a quilt, but we're gonna make a giant pineapple block that will be a quilt. And it's just gonna need one jelly roll or jelly flat or, you know, two and a half inch strips of 40 of them right here. You know, because I don't know what to call these. It's not a roll anymore. It's a flat fold kind of like bundle almost. <laughs> and I always give myself an allowance of backyard, backyard, backyard fabric. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yep. My background fabric, which I usually choose solids because, well, I like solids. And I really don't have anything that goes with this ballerina fabric other than a solid. So I gave myself an allowance of two yards. So that should cover like everything I need for the quilt top and even for binding because there should be plenty of fabric for that. So when we're just going to go ahead and get started, the first thing I'm going to do is open my jelly roll here. This is called Pearl Ballet by Canvas Studio. And it was gifted to me. And it's going to make a nice big mess because it is, you know, kinked edges and all. Look at that. It's so tight. <laughs> it was just stuck. So this is a whole stack of pinks, purples, and blacks. Look at that. And it's pinked edges, so it's definitely shredding already. Look at that. First part is done. Just like that. that. You put the big hunk of fabric there for all the shredding? <laughs> yeah, I could catch it on the fabric and call it a day. <laughs> so, again, that was Pearl Ballet by Canvas Studio. It's a 40-piece jelly roll or jelly flat or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I make up my own words for things, you know. The second thing is my two yards of fabric. I'm going to start off by cutting... Hold on, my brain's working here. Six four and a half inch strips, and then I'm going to subcut those six four and a half inch strips into a bazillion four and a half inch squares. Because we're just going to get right to it today. So I already have it laid nicely here. So all I have to do is like measure four and a half because I cut it off the bolt. So it should go quickly. All right, it's only folded in half. And um, one, two, three, four, and that's a half. Good. So I'm going to cut six four and a half inch strips. I'll line my ruler up and go slide. This is going to be so easy. You guys are going to be like, I want to make that. So if you want to make it along with me right now, I'd say hurry up and grab a jelly roll and two yards of fabric. I don't even think you fully need two yards. I always over measure. That's that too four. Much and not I'm going to cut one more time. I'm just starting out with six because I don't know exactly how much I'm going to need because I kind of like to make things up as I go. You guys know that. All right. Let's 
gonna try to move this out of the way, but right there. There we go. Close that. All right, I'm gonna fold this out of the way for now. Shoot, that might even be enough for the back too, honestly, for how big this thing will be. I'm gonna turn these and sub cut into four and a half inch um, squares. So I'm gonna line them back up, keeping them in, in half. I'm gonna grab a different ruler, cut the selvage off, and then start cutting four and a half inch squares. Toss that in my garbage thing. Move that out of the way. All right, four and a half. That's my magic number today. Four and a half. So I went with gray because there's a lot of gray in all this, and I don't have any other colors. I could have probably went with a dark purple, but it wouldn't have matched. And I'm all about trying to match it, sort of. And I would, I usually like using black, but there's already black in the jelly roll strips. So obviously I'm not using black for that. Oh man, I hate when that happens. Straighten back up. Right there. Hopefully everybody's had or is still having a fabulous weekend. I've been a super busy girl this weekend. Doing super busy tiffy things. Household stuff. Household stuff. Trying to turn this house into a luxury home. No, I'm just kidding. A yeah, luxury a luxury home for us. This is our home and we have fun making things a little bit better than they used to be. Well, they all like your shirt. Thank you. This was gifted to me by a subscriber out there. She knows who she is. Says, I drive fast and barefoot, although I'm not completely barefoot, but when you have socks on, is that considered barefoot still? Your socks that are covered with thread. Yeah, this is what <laughs> happens when you live with a quilter. Don't walk around with just socks on because they collect all the thread. Here. You need to mop your floors, just put some socks on and walk around. <laughs> you need to clean it. it all up. Don't need so you don't need to, to mop anything. You just put some socks on. All right, this is what we're going to do here. This is going to be so much fun because this is freeing. You don't really have to do anything specific, no exact cuts or anything besides the background. We're going to start with one of our background squares or accent color, whatever you want to call it. That's a four and a half inch square. And then we're just going to grab one strip, any strip, just one strip. I'm going to save. Well, let's go with this pretty purple one right here. We're going to take that one strip. We're going to open it up. I'm going to cut the selvage off of the one end, and I'm just going to use scissors for this. And we're going to sew this on with a quarter inch seam allowance on one side, just one side for now. And I should use a seam guide, but you know, I'm going to be. Squares are four and a half inches, right? Yes, four and a half inches to start. So I'm going to sew this on. And then you can see it hangs over. So what I'm gonna do is, again, you can just use scissors with this. I'm gonna cut it straight to my center, four and a half inch square. I'm gonna go ahead and press it away from the center with just my finger. Are your strips two and a half inches? Yes, these are two and a half inch strips. And then we're gonna grab a different one. Let's go with a pink. And I, actually, you know what? Yeah. I'm just going to go with this pretty pink. I'm going to cut the end off where the selvage is nice and straight or as straight as I could possibly get it. And I'm going to put that on the opposite side, opposite side. Sew it on again, just flip it over and cut it to size. So it's nice to have a little pair of scissors next to you, just like this. And I've used that strip now. And then I'm just going to finger press it back. Although sooner or later, I will eventually need to use the iron. 
And then I'm going to grab another strip. That's right. I'm just going to grab another strip. Um, yeah, you can turn the iron on. and It's getting a lot of up and down. Maybe I'll do it myself because it's a lot of up and down. You guessed it. We're going to add it to a side. Doesn't matter which side because both sides we're going to put something on. Just going to add it to one of the two empty sides. Just going to lay it on here. Sew it on. Again, I'm going to flip it upside down. I'm going to cut it equal with the previous strip. And the ones that I'm throwing right here are going to be ones that I've already used that I'll pull from again. I'm going to go ahead and finger press that back. And you can see I have almost a square. <laughs> I have a little rectangle going on. And now I'm going to add, I'm going to add another black one on the opposite side. All right, so I'm going to add this guy to this side. So we're just making a very colorful box, which is a square around, building a square around a square. And we're just scissor cutting because it's easier that way. But you can use a rotary cutter if you need. All right. So now we should have this right here, a square that's been built around. Can you chain piece this? Um, not really. You can't chain piece this, I don't think. Because the next step we'll be adding to this, but we're going to get it flat first before we do that. I'm also going to go through and take eight strips out of here because I'm going to need eight of them to stay like almost full. Two. Three. Four. Seven and another black. We'll do the ballerina slip. No, we'll do this one right here. So eight of my strips I've separated because I need them to kind of stay salvage to salvage in their full position. The rest of them, I should have said that in the beginning, sorry. The rest of them are whatever. All right, let's press this nice and flat. And yes, I'm using a steam iron. It constantly steams and it makes it so super duper flat. So here's my super duper flat block. The next step is to grab four of your four and a half inch squares. Four of them, you need four. Now you can draw on the back side of them or you can use diagonal seam tape, which is what I use, but we're gonna draw a line from corner to corner because we're gonna be sewing on that line. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick one of these in this corner right here, just like this. And we're gonna sew on that drawn line that I did not draw, but we're gonna pretend I did. So from it doesn't matter what corner you put it on because all four of these are gonna go on a corner. So I'm just gonna sew from corner to corner of my accent or background color, whatever you wanna call it. And what you'll have is this, but when you fold it back, you'll have this right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that excess away. Here's where a ruler, or you could still use scissors, but I'm gonna use a ruler. I'm gonna cut a quarter inch away. And I'm gonna save all these scraps, I'll sew them later. Sometimes I take the time to sew them now, but I'm not going to. 
I'm going to press this back. And what you have is something that looks like that. Now we're going to grab another one, another square that's drawn from corner to corner. And we're going to add it to another corner. And we're going to sew again from corner to corner. I'm going to cut away my excess, the quarter inch seam allowance. Just going to make a pile of these things. And then I'm going to fold it back, and you'll see that I have two corners added onto. Okay, so there's two. We're going to add our third one. And remember, we're sewing across this way. Not that way, because there's no which way to go, but this way, from corner to corner. Trim it off. Yeah, there'd be no way to chain piece this, unless you're building, like, more than one quilt. All right, I'm going to press it back. Lots of pressing, so if you have your station, your pressing station right next to you, it'd make things a whole heck of a lot easier. Fourth square, it's going to go on here now, just like this. And again, I'm going to sew on my drawn line, or my invisibly drawn line, because I use seam tape. Trim away my quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to press it back, and I will have a square in a square. Is this your own design, or is it um, This is just me knowing how to make something on my own. Like, I, I see things, and I know how to make them. So this is me doing my thing. All right. Once you have this, it should be, I'll tell you right now, an eight and a half inch square. So you should have an eight and a half inch square. So you could just make a ton of these and hook them all together if you wanted, but I don't see the point because we're making a giant pineapple block. Next is to grab more fabric. So we're going to start with another fabric right here. I'm going to cut the salvage off. Would you chain piece if you were just doing the blocks without the triangles? Uh, if I was doing the blocks without the triangles, yes, I would chain piece. If I was just building a, around the blocks, I would, yes. All right, I cut the selvage off. We're going to go ahead and add this piece to one of the sides. Doesn't matter which side right now. Just add it to one, whatever one you think looks the best. I'm going to flip it upside down, cut the excess away. like that. Press it back with my finger for now. Grab another one and add it to the opposite side. So again, I'm just cutting the selvages right here. No big deal. Just cutting those off. You can hang them over and trim the block if you want. So I'm going to go on the opposite side. I'm going to trim it equal with my block. Again, you can use a rotary cutter if you want, but. Well, you got her table runner. Oh, table runner. yay. Because it's beautiful. Your work is so crisp. Just beautiful. Thank you. I don't try. <laughs> I just make things. You look very good. Don't put yourself down. I don't like it. All right. You do that. So now you'll have a rectangle that looks like this. We're going to go ahead and I'm actually going to go and grab these original pieces that I started with on the black and I'm going to add one to each side. So I'm just going to line this up right here and add it to this side and then I'll grab the other black and add it to the other side because we can still use these pieces still if you want to um, start mixing more up. But this is going to get big and eventually you're going to need long pieces. That's why we separated eight of them. 
So that way they stay kind of whole. So at this point, such a long seam, I could actually fold it on top of itself right here. Hold it on that fold and cut that off right now. And press it back. So now I have this. I'm going to add this one to the other side. So I'm trying to blend all this together, you know. <laughs> Once it's on my table, I can fold it back and cut a nice straight line right there. And then press it back. So once it's pressed, we have this right here. I'm just going to come over here and press it flat. We want it flat for the next step. As flat as you can get it. Are you intentionally putting the darts on one side and lights on the other side? Um, not really. I'm trying to mess them up, but I kind of wanted to use more of the black fabric because it has most gray in it. So I'm intentionally like just grabbing and going. So right now we should have a 12 and a half inch block that looks like this. And guess what? That's right. You guessed it. We're going to take four more of our four and a half inch squares. Four more. And we're going to draw that line on the back side of them from corner to corner. And we're going to add them to the corners. So I'm going to just one at a time, constantly moving the seam guide out of the way. I'm going to stitch from corner to corner. And then I'm going to put this one on because now they don't touch. So you can chain piece all these on or sit and do all four at the same time. Grab the third. And the fourth. So I'm putting it on all four corners. And you can see how quickly this is going to become a nice quilt. So I'm going to trim away my quarter inch seam allowance. And you don't need a special ruler. Nope, you don't need a special ruler, exactly. I do have two different versions of the pineapple ruler, but. And I actually started a pineapple quilt without a ruler, which is using a regular ruler. And. Uh, I never finished it because I got bored with it. So obviously, you know, one of these days I probably should finish it. <laughs> all right, now that it's getting bigger, I'm gonna just stand to press all these back. And at this point, it should still be a 12 and a half inch square. So this is what it looks like like that. And again, Once you guessed it. Explain your bra case there while you have a second. Oh, this is a bra case. Technically, it's actually for bras on vacation. But for me, it, well, I meant to put stuff in it, but everybody asks about it and I open it so much. <laughs> it has a little net so that I could put my stuff in here, close it up, and take it with me. It even fits. Better. My rotary cutter. Look at that. And it stays in this boob right here. If you put it in that boob, it'll stay in that boob. <laughs> so one of my local friends found this on Amazon and she came over one day and she's like, I got something for you. And she gives it to me. I was like, oh my God, that is so adorable. <laughs> so that is my, if I ever do travel and take anything with me, sewing related, it's going in there. <laughs> for now, it's just a decoration.
All right. Moving on. Someone always asks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's grab another fabric. Yep, that's right. Another fabric. Let's do a purple right here. I'm going to uh, cut off the selvage. And I'm going to add it to, again, it doesn't matter what side, but I'm going to add it to whatever side I feel like it. And you can use the same color on both sides if you wanted, or move them around, or have the same full, same color on all four sides. That's if you have enough of the jelly roll strip. But, you know, you can mix match however you want to do it. It's up to you. It's your quilt. So we're going to sew this on one side. Do you like gonna... the cordless iron that's behind you? Yes, I do like my cordless iron, but I only like it for blocks. I don't like it for pressing... Um, whole quilts or big jobs. Huh? Yeah, I used it last week. Yep. Just watch last So Sunday's video. All right, so I have that on one side. I'm actually going to add that same one on this side. Like I said, you can add to whatever side you want. You can mix them up as much as you want. Um, there's no rules because it's your quilt. And we're having fun is what we're doing. There's really no rules except for when you add the next piece and add, you know what I mean? When you add the triangles at the end. So there's that. Just going to finish sewing it on. I'm going to go ahead and press this back at the iron because, like I said, this is going to grow really quick. Um, when it's jelly roll strips, it's usually a four and a half inch corner. So anytime you're using jelly roll strips and you want to snowball the corners, it's usually a, you know, and have this kind of look, then it's usually a four and a half inch strip because two jelly roll pieces together is a four and a half inch, if that makes any sense at all. All right, we're going to add the pink words on both other sides now. They are four and a half inch. That's what the squares the are. The yeah, it, it's how it lines up. The strips are two and a half inch. Every time we add a strip, it's a two and a half inch strip. If you're going to use one and a half inch strips, say you're building this with one and a half inch strips, then you would need a three inch square for your corners for the add on. Did I? Oh no, it's just cut on that. Okay, so I'm going to fold this on top of itself. I'm going to add the same exact strip to the opposite side because I'm trying to utilize all this. Because the bigger it gets, the longer the strip you need. And it grows fast. This is a quick sew. So if you need something that needs to be together because you were invited to a baby shower in, you know, an hour and a half and you had a long arm to do the rest, then this could be done. I'm telling you it can. <laughs> well, maybe two or three hours for everybody. <laughs> All right, I'm going to press that back. And now I should have like a 15 inch, I think, square at this point. I think I'm at 15. You may count. Nope, 16, 17 inch. All right, so now I have this. And guess what? We're going to do that same thing with four of our squares. You're going to draw your line from corner to corner and sew on it. What made you decide on the four and a half inch square? Because I wanted them to touch the tip. So you see right here, each tip touches. That's what I wanted. I wanted each of them to come up to the next. That's why I did four and a half. 
All right, so I'm going to add these to each corner now. Grab another, sew it on the corner. Grab another, sew it on the corner. I'm telling you guys, this is pretty quick. This is a quick little project. And it's fun because you get to just put the jelly roll strips anywhere you want. And it don't matter. Because in the end, it'll all come together. All right, I'm going to trim away my excess. Just know that this is going to get big where it's going to hardly fit on most people's cutting mats. So just watch for that. Just bring up the part of the block that you need. And try not to cut anything else that's in the way. <laughs> that, would, that would be a tragedy. And again, I'm saving all these to f for another little project that I can do or make it with a border with all these little half square triangle cutoffs because I don't throw nothing away. Would the squares for one and a half strips have to be two and a half due to seam allowance? No. Nope. Oh, well, yep, actually, I'm thinking about it. Two, one and a half. Yeah, no, I thought it would be three. Could be two and a half. Math is not my forte, you guys. Thinking in my head. And it makes sense, but doesn't at the same time. All right. Yeah, it would be two and a half. Okay. You guessed it. We're going to go around it again. So I'm going to go with black. So I'm going to cut the edge off. Or the selvage. You know what I'm talking about. And we're just going to add to any side. It doesn't matter which side. We're just making sure we go on the opposite sides. And to keep me sewing a nice quarter inch seam, I have to put my magnetic seam guide back every single time. You wouldn't have to start and go all the way to the end. You're going to cut it off anyway when you snowball, right? Um, yeah, you wouldn't have to go to the end. No, you it, make sure it's sticking out a quarter inch. If you wanted to save fabric that much more and not have a full half square triangle for later, then yeah, you just make sure that you go to the end, but a quarter inch beyond it. So you would be keeping a little square at every end, like two and a half inch square worth back. You know what I mean? Hope that made sense. Sometimes when I say things, it doesn't make no sense. Is there a name to the fabric you're using? Uh, it's Canvas Studios. It's Pearl. Yeah, it says Pearl something. It's little ballerina fabric. And yes, I'm getting up to press this. I'm going to go ahead and put this same black one on this opposite side. Like I said, it doesn't matter what side you put it on. If what? The original square is crooked. Do you rip it or continue? I wouldn't rip it. I would just keep building around it. If the starting square was crooked, then you cut it crooked to start with. It would, it would mean it wasn't completely square to start. If you want to square up the next stage and the next stage and the next stage, each set of blocks that you're adding, then you can go ahead and do that and make it nice and straight. But I don't see the point in that. I think you should just keep on building. Run what you grow. Yeah, just keep building. As long as it lays flat, that's all that matters. 
on. Yep. There you go. No joke there. All right. So now I have two sides. Now I got to add these sides right here. So I can just add whatever I feel like it. So I'm going to put this one on one side and I'll do a purple on the other because I still have plenty of other strips that I can keep. I don't want purple. I want this light pink right here. That's the one I want. We're going to lay that right Right sides together. So if you were not wanting to go all the way to the end, you would have to start it right there, a quarter inch beyond the end of your triangle. And then you would have to stop this one a quarter inch before. So at the end right here, you would stop about right here. So really, honestly, I think it's more wasteful to do that because you can build something from your second amount from your half square triangle cutoffs because they're exactly the same size. So I would just suggest going all the way to the end. Yeah, you could start with a rectangle and have a rectangle quilt. It's still the same look. Your original square and a square would be a square and a rectangle. It wouldn't, two of your sides won't match on the rectangle part. So just know that there would be a separation between the two. But the, the look of it would still be what I'm going for here as a large pineapple block. But yes, you can make it rectangle. Um, it's freeing and you don't really have to pay attention to any exact size or numbers or cuts. Or the only thing that's an exact cut is the fact that it's two and a half inch strips with a four and a half inch square. Other than that, I'm not doing anything that's exact or precise, which I like. All right, let's press those. You're just making a pineapple. I'm just making a large pineapple. Yep. It would be kind of hard to sh square this after every time you add something because it is quite large and it's going to be bigger than your cutting mat. So I would just suggest, you know, um, to not even bother trimming. Just keep going. Don't trim it to size. Just keep adding and adding and adding. Don't, don't bother with exact measurements and squaring things up because it all will work out in the end eventually. All right, so four more for each corner. So I'm going to go ahead and sew them on the corners. I like this kind of stuff when you just keep building. It's kind of like log cabin blocks too. The pineapple block is kind of based on the log cabin block where you just build and build and build. You don't really have to have the next exact number. You just add another strip, square it off, add another strip, square it off. It does not have to be exact to get it. And then you would trim your final block to size. So, you know, this is laying pretty nice to start. So I like it and it's fun. And I'm going to get a bonus project out of it. I always like when I have bonus projects from the cutoffs. Square 
where do we use? Two inch strips. That's when you would do a three. Yeah. All right, let's make sure this stuff is out of the way so that I can cut these off. So I'm just trimming off a quarter inch away from the seam that I just sewed. I'm just making a stack of them and then pressing them back. What do you do when your strip isn't long enough? Um, you can add strips to it if you want. Or... Um, you can take, like, if you are trying to even go bigger and say your jelly roll had two of each strip in it, cause they do that in a lot of jelly rolls, you can take two of those exact same strips, sew them together end to end to make it longer, you know? Like I said, this is growing pretty quick, so just know that it's going to be bigger than most ironing boards unless you have my ironing board which is going to be bigger than that soon <laughs> all right so now build around it some more and i could actually take fresh new strips or i can use strips from this as long as they're long enough so right now i'm just going to grab some fresh new strip here and you can use the same strip on both sides you can use different strips on all four sides it's your choice, personal preference, whatever you want to do, because it's, again, your quilt. Why aren't you sewing the extra seam and the half square triangles? Also, the half square triangles afterwards. I'm just making a stack of them right now. I didn't want to do that during the video. Just figured I'd do the project. No, it's not done yet. This is going to go for a bit until we can't go no more. It's going to be around 45 something ish inches. It's going to be a baby quilt size. Just know that. I don't do math, so don't quote me on it. <laughs> Just know that it'll be quite a nice size. It'll be big. So, because I can, I'm going to add this same one to the other side. Here. I'm going to try to use up some of these other strips. I'm just going to fold this on here. So I have a little tiny square that won't need to go anywhere because there's no room for that. All right, press these back. Just keep building around it until we can't build no more. What design are you using? Mm, this one I'm probably going to do some kind of swirly something because it's ballet. Swirl with a feather or something at the tip. That's a good idea. All right. Now I have this, I got to add to the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to dig through this pile right here because I already have some strips. I'm going to make sure it's long enough. Let's see. Nope, that one's not long enough. This one is definitely long enough. So we're going to go with this one. I'm trying to use up some of these strips. Because either way, I'm going to use them after the fact, too, with the other half square triangles. I will make something fun. All right, fold it up on itself. Roll it to the size it needs to be, making sure my sides are aligned. Then I just cut it to size. Like I said, like I said this is why I like projects like this, because I don't have to have an accurate number measurement. Okay, let's add one to the opposite side. 
This one seems long enough, so this is going to be the one I add. <laughs> It would be really cool if you had a rainbow of strips and you used black or white as your um, thing and just started going with the red around and then the orange around and then the yellow, green, blue, purple, you know what I mean? And did a rainbow effect. That would be awesome. I'm giving ideas here, guys. Okay, roll it back. Make my cut. All right, I'm going to press it. And you could also make more than one block as well. If you wanted a rectangle quilt, you can just make, you'll need a lot of jelly rolls for it, but you could make a bunch of blocks this big and put three across by four down and you would have yourself a rectangular quilt. Like right now I'm at 24 and a half inches. So if you wanted, you could make a bunch this big, but like I said, you're going to need more than one jelly roll for that. And then make a bunch of blocks this size or even the smaller size of whatever size you want and then hook all those blocks together. You'd have a really awesome quilt. All right, so we're gonna add to the corners now. We need four more gray squares. We're gonna add these to the corner. Move my chingamabobber out of the way. I'm gonna go on all four corners. Try to hold everything nice and straight. You can pin if you need to. And you could also make sure that you have thread in your bobbin. <laughs> That's a good one, yes. You gotta have thread. Yeah. It's a good thing I rolled some bobbins. All right. What piece did I add? It was that one. Okay, so I just ran out of bobbin right here, literally. Right there. Okay, sew this on. Turn it, add another. another and then we'll trim those off and build again. One more corner. Trim off excess, making sure everything is staying flat. Got myself a nice little pile that I'm going to make half square triangles out of later. Oh no, come on, right there. Thank you. I'm seriously stuck to a thread right there. After Sculliver, do you think you'll continue with paper piecing? Um, yeah. I have other paper piecing stuff that I can do. I just don't do paper piecing very often, but yes, I will still do paper piecing after Sculliver. And all four of those are off. Let's press. And I'm just rolling them back towards that fabric, towards the accent fabric or background, whatever you want to consider it. To me, it just looks like an accent. On yep, the a new Sculliver video will be out on Wednesday. It'll be part four, four, yeah, four. I think so. Video four. 
Okay, so far I have this. Right now it's at a size where it'd be the perfect little wall hanging. But no, we're going to keep going. <laughs> All right. Going, going, going. We're the Energizer Bunny. We're just going to keep going. All right, so I'm going to lay it right here and see what do I have that's this length from this pile right here, because I'm gonna still try to use up these pieces, and that one is a good size, that one definitely is not. That one is not. That one is a good size. So that one and this one are gonna get used right now. But wait, there's more. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna add to this and the two sides that I have the black on. Keep moving my seam guide back and forth, back and forth. I just want to make sure I sew a straight line. Because for the life of me, I cannot sew a straight line. I tried today while fixing a shirt. Yes, I mend my own shirts, but, you know. And it was not very straight because I couldn't use my seam guide. <laughs> It was a very crooked, crooked seam I took. <laughs> and also, this Shuki did not like the fabric that I sewed. Okay, let's add to the opposite side with this lovely purple. I don't think any of those cut off pieces are now this size anymore. All right, I'm going to press those and then grab two more strips to add. We're almost to the point where we're only going to be using whole strips. But if you wanted, say you wanted this and this, you could also take your scrap pieces and sew the ends together with another little piece in the middle of it and then center them on here the way you want it and sew them on. That way you're utilizing all of your scrap pieces. All right, let's do this and this. All right, I'm gonna cut the salvage off. Line up the end. And as you can see, there's no sense in pinning them on either unless you absolutely have to. I'm just lining them up and sewing them on. Not pulling or tugging. It's just so freeing to do things like this. Okay, so now I'm going to add to this side this piece. So do your triangles get bigger? No. You can make it if you wanted them to be bigger, but then you're just cutting off what you previously sewed on. So there's no sense in that. This is creating a pineapple block. So the square just keeps getting bigger, but the triangles are going to stay the same.
Hey, but again, the project I'm doing matches my beautiful nails. <laughs> I don't plan it that way. <laughs> it just happens that way. Turn it, press the other side. And then the next step, again, you guess it, is adding the four and a half inch squares on the ends, on the corners, four corners. So we're gonna bring this lovely huge block. Look at this. When I said a giant pineapple block, that's what I meant. A giant pineapple block. All right, four more. Two, three, and four. And then I'm going to put them on the corners. Just lining them up on here and sewing from corner to corner or on your drawn line. And you could pre draw the line if you need to on all your squares. Jane says, maybe you're inspired by your nails. <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably. It just never seems to fail, though. Every time I do something, it always matches my nails. When I'm long arm, even client quilts will come in, and I'll be long arming it, and I'll have my hand on there. Be like, wow, my nails really match this. <laughs> and I don't plan it. It's just what comes to your me. Your subconscious thinking. Eh? <laughs> You're subconsciously doing it. Yep. <laughs> All right, one more corner. Like I said, it's getting bigger, so you got to make sure that your project is neatly held up somehow, some way, because it will try to move on you. If not. All right, cut away the excess. And do not accidentally cut your tops. Make sure it's nice and flat and everything's out of the way. Time to press all those and then we'll be adding some more strips. But now, like I said, none of my little scrap strips can be used because they're all too small now. So now we're going to solid squares. So we're coming to an end sooner or later. Sooner or later. So here's what we have so far. It's getting so big, it's going to barely fit on the camera screen. <laughs> All right, now to choose. I'll do this strip and this strip right here on each side. Come on, get off of there. Try to use these word ones up. I'm going to cut the salvage off. Stuff at 42 by 42? Somewhere around there. We'll see. Are your squares all the same fabric? My little squares on the ends, yes, they're all the same. Can you take your half squares that you're cutting off and use them as to be a border? It can, yes. You can use all the cutoffs to be a border. You can do whatever you want. Um, run some um, vinegar through it. Yeah, I was going to say that's what we ran. So 
Run some vinegar water, a vinegar water mixture through it. All right, I'm gonna add this to the opposite side. Just gonna cut the salvage off. Kind of trying to equally go through it with the blacks, if you guys haven't noticed. That way they're not like pronounced all on one side or in one spot. Press those back and then grab more for the next two sides. And I'm just pressing everything away from the center every time I add something. Even my when I'm adding my um, squares on the ends and I turn it into a half square triangle, I'm always pressing out. Everything is being pressed away from the center each and every time. Which iron is better, the ceramic shelf plate or the metal? Um, ceramic. Ceramic stays hotter but better. I think that's an opinion, more of an opinion. But yeah. Some people I'm sure like metal. Yeah. I like the ceramic sole plate better though, lately. What size would the center be if you were doing it as a right hand? Um, I don't know if I know what that would be. That would, You could have it whatever size you, you could start with whatever center you want, I think. I just went with a square because what I'm doing is square. I want something with darker purple. And that reads pink, so we'll pull that one in there. All right, so I'm going to add to these two set sides, right sides together. <laughs> I almost put that on wrong sides together. Just going to line it up. Throw it on. Come on. Get in there. There we go. This side. Take a drink of water. Add strip. Keep the project on table. Because <laughs> it's going to try to fall at this Good point. Reminder. And these are super long strings, so you don't, strings, passes, you don't want to stretch or pull on them. Just lay it on here and go. That goes in that pile. All right, press it back and then we'll add some squares in the corners. This is a cute little ballerina quilt, that's for sure. Press 
opposite side. I really like the idea of a, a rainbow one, but I don't have any rainbow jelly rolls <laughs> or else I would have done that. Okay, we're gonna grab four of our squares and we're gonna add them onto the corners. Um, no, but they feel like it sometimes. Jelly rolls are cut on the straight of grain, which is selvage to selvage. That is the straight of grain and or this way, diagonally, diagonally, that's diagonal, right? No, that's sideways, sideways. Uh, though there's a word for it, though. Perpendicular, parallel. Uh, parallel, whatever. They're either up and down this way or side to side this way. That would be straight of grain. Diagonal would be not straight of grain. But for some strange reason, you can tug and pull on these jelly roll strips and knock them all out of whack. And it's almost every single company that I've ever gotten a jelly roll strip from that are stretchy. I don't know why, because when I cut my own jelly roll strips, they're not stretchy, but these are cut salvage to salvage. I don't know. I don't know. It's probably the brand of fabrics, too. I, I don't know. Make sure nothing is in the way as I trim all these off, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. My shirt keeps riding up. I'm getting like sweaty. Should have tied my hair up. Every time I work with the iron on, I don't know about you guys, but when the iron is on the whole time I'm working, it's like it's like a sauna up in this room. I could have all the fans facing me and I'm still sweating because the iron is on. All right. Well, it doesn't matter if you or me iron. It's still the iron, I think, warms the room. Yes, it does. Yeah, in the winter time, I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not going to be bad in the winter, but when it's still warm outside, because it's about eighty-eight degrees outside right now. Uh, no, it's ninety-four for today. Oh, is it? It was eighty-eight earlier. Yeah. All right. Now to add some more, so I'm just going to grab four of these. One two, three, and four. Um, right here. Okay, my seam guide, as you guys can tell, I'm getting super duper warm in here. How many? Do you need water or no. Well, yeah, actually, I do. Okay. Give me water, cold water. I'll get you another water. And you guys just love that sound. <laughs> All right, sewing more on. Here we go.
Okay, go to the opposite side. Love you. Love you. Thank you. Oh, yes, nice cold water. Where am I at? I want this guy, actually. I want this one. Because that one's already, like, on that side. I'm trying to mix it all up. All right. it onto itself, trimming it straight. You could also, with all these scraps, sew them together and do, a, um, what is it called? There's a word for it. I forgot. A whatever border. A piano key border. All right. I'm going to press it and then add the next two sides. Yep, I'm going to go around until I can't fit us any more on here. Until it's too long for a jelly roll strip. That's why I pulled out eight full strips. That way, just in case, I had eight aside so that I know that that was my final amount. All right, I'm going to do these two sides. This one first. Let's take this off. It's cute. The salvages have little ballerina slippers of the colors that are in the fabric. It's adorable. And there goes my foot. Come back. Thank you. You'd think even on carpet it would stay still, but it doesn't. It kind of just wants to move away from me. It's because all I all that pedal to the metal thing, you know. Getting close to. Did I lose my feed? No, I'm. I am on this one. Well, join the club. This one's lost it. Okay. Let's add the opposite side. How are the triangles going on? They're going on the corners. It's a square that we are adding to each corner. Each time we go around four times, all the way around, then we add a square in each corner. I don't need to make a salvage quilt. No need for me. I don't save them. I throw them away. That's probably the only fabric I do throw away. 
is little skinny sliver cutoffs and the salvages. I know some people have made quilts. I've seen them on Pinterest and all sorts of internet -y areas. And yeah, I just, no need for me to do one. Not my thing. I'd rather just use the actual fabric and the pretty colors. And not all selvages from the fabrics I get even have anything on them. So, and the ones that do is just Walmart fabric names, you know, or anything like that. And then, or jelly roll strips, which have just a tiny little piece. So there's no purpose in those. I'm just making a stack right here because I, I don't want to throw them over there right now and make a big mess. All right. Four squares. Let's add to all four corners. I think we're going to be able to go around this three more times. I'm not 100% sure, but should be about three more times. So again, I'm sewing it just on the corner. From corner to corner. Just making sure that it's laying flat right here on my extension table. Lining it up with the corner. And one more corner, and then we'll trim them off and go around again. That's why I only cut six strips off my yardage, and I probably overestimated my yardage, but I can use it for a border, like a stopping border, and or whatever I want, honestly. For the binding, I probably even have enough to make it as a, the back of the quilt. Well, maybe not. I don't know. It's getting kind of big. <laughs> but I allot myself a certain amount of yardage for my videos when I make um, quilts, especially when it's not a pattern, you know. It's rare I do other people's patterns. I did think about it, though. I was knowing that I was going to use a jelly roll today. And I was like, hmm, I have tons of cozy quilt patterns. They're so easy to do and they're easy to understand. And I could have done one of those, but then I was like, I want a Tiffany original. <laughs> and I know how to do this. And yeah, that's fun and freeing. I didn't want to have to be bothered by actual directions today. Okay, press these back. so fun look at this thing it's so cute too moving the colors around you get that yes this is total polar opposites of scullivery yes i know cute <laughs> cute girly pinky stuff is not really me except for my nails but still <laughs> i don't normally do cutesy stuff but i don't choose i don't purposely choose cutesy fabrics either this is just something that was sent to me so are you I'm going to use it. Gray fabric? Yes, I'm snowballing the gray fabric onto the corners. All right. Let's go around it again. So I'm going to choose this pink, this purple, and probably going to do pink and purple on both sides. Stay. I'm going to cut the salvage off first. I'm gonna do it on this one too, because they know what's next. System, little girl will love that. Yes, exactly. Not even a little girl. There could be an adult lady who was a ballerina, you know, or just loves the ballet or something, and she 
yeah. wants to use it. You know, just to sit and cuddle on the couch or even hang on the wall. Who knows? All right. Where are the original eight strips you saved? Up there over there in that pile that now looks like I just threw it all right there. <laughs> <laughs> this thing was kind of getting big, so they're moved away. But I did pull out eight strips to uh, be my final two rounds. All right. Right there. Go to the other side. And you could build it, like build that, 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 and that, like in a square. You can go around the square if you wanted to. I'm just going opposite sides because I'm kind of paying attention to the color. But at this point, you could just build around it because you're cutting off the end anywhere, anyway, that shows where they were joined, which direction they were joined in. So honestly, there's no rules with that. I'm just going opposite so that I can have a good balance of color. Because once you put your snowballed corner or square on the end that creates a triangle, you lose the whatever side you put on first anyway. It doesn't, you can't tell. Don't fall on me. Onto itself and kill it off. Uh, and choose. I'm going to choose two more strips after I press this. And I think I'll be able to go around the two more times after this. Not 100%, but I'm pretty sure. I'm not fully the, the width of a jelly roll strip yet. Okay, now to go down these two sides with more pink. Why not? one and whoa this one and there's my original eight strips I think right here okay so I'm gonna cut the selvage off of this sew it on yeah I want to see an elk and two deer yeah, we'll do they fight do the elk and deer fight I'm curious about, about that. I seen an elk in ages. I don't know if an elk is. Or do they live amongst each other? What is the word for it when animals live among, like a cat and dog? Yeah, I don't know. Some cats happily. and dogs fight, but they happily live in the same area. The same fields and woodsy areas. How about that? Hey, if it's hunting season, why isn't the husband out there shooting it? If it's right there in the yard, <laughs> it's hunting season. It's right there. Cohabitate. That's Cohabitate. Yep. Thank you. Whoever said that. <laughs> you got some food right there in your yard. Or do you not want to make sure Bambi sees its demise and become food? Borders. Borders turn square quilt tops into rectangles. All right. So 
So now I'm at the point where I have two and a half inches left. So my next round is the last round. I knew I was getting close. And they're probably not going to come all the way to the end. Hopefully. We'll see. Oh, that's the same fabric as that. I don't want that one. She says he is out hunting, but he's not at the house, which oh. is too funny. Because all the animals are at the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you go do it? Or do you not have a hunting license? Do you have to have each person individually has probably, to have the hunting yes, license? Yes. Man. All right. Add this guy on here and then go around one more time after this. And then the rest will become borders. <laughs> oh. Leave it to the men. I wouldn't mind hunting. Now, I don't know if I would want to eat the things I hunt, just like fishing. I hate fish, but I don't mind fishing. <laughs> I've took the kids out fishing how many times? You've never once come, so I don't want to hear it. I fished when I was a kid. I have a picture of me when I was like 14 years old with a big, huge bass on the, on the thing because I was up fishing in the mountains. All right, I'm gonna press this back and then we're gonna add the final round. And that probably won't come exactly to the end. Now all you need is a thumper and you'll have a movie in yeah. your backyard. Because Bunny is Bambi's best friend. Well, here you go. This is you. Because I prefer shooting to hunting. That's you. We go out shooting. Yeah, I, don't, I love to go out shooting. I'm a good shot. So don't mess with me. <laughs> she is. She really is. I really am. She's very good with a handgun. Yep. I can't hit the side of the house. But I'm very good with a rifle. And she doesn't do much. All right, so I'm going to add my four pieces on here. And then we'll go around it one more time and add four more pieces. And then I'm going to do a stopping border of two and a half inches with my gray fabric I think and then use the last of all the strips and make something around it. That way I'm using up more of the fabric because I don't think these last ones are going to go from end to end. But we'll see. It'll come close. The new cookie. All right. Oh my goodness. My thread cutter doesn't like to work much lately. All right, let's cut these off without messing with the quilt top. Oh, right there in front of my face. So ruler, rotary cutter. Did you calculate the right number of four and a half inch squares or did you just cut a lot of them? I just cut a lot of them. I cut six strips. So that leaves me with this many. So I probably only needed five strips. Because I'll need four more for the next round, which is the last round. Are you going to stop either the corner squares? No, I'm going to keep going with corner squares as well. And one more. I'm going to press these back and we're going to go around 
One more time. That's it. One more. Have you done a video making a braid? Um, I think you did. I think I did about four years ago, and it's probably horrible quality video. <laughs> No, we're not talking about hair braids. We're talking about fabric braid. I'm talking about hair braid. Oh, no, I've fabric braid is what I'm, I'm sure talking about. I'm sure that person's talking about fabric braid, but I don't know what that is. But a hair braid video, you've made a hair braid video. What is a fabric braid? I don't even know what that is. I will show you right now. Yeah. Get her done. Where's it at? I have not throw, put my um, sew along blocks together yet with my friend Eric. <laughs> so I have two quilts worth of blocks in here. The braided ones are these right oh, here. Yes, I do know what that is. That's awesome. So, like yes, that. I've done plenty of them. I just haven't trimmed them because I don't know the size they need to be at the at this time. But I have to put together my sew along with my friend Eric with Treasured Heart Creations. I think he, his name is just put explanation I got Eric. It. I got it. It's on there. But yeah, here's all my blocks for two quilts right here, and I just haven't done it yet because I started Sculliver, and you know I do like 500 sew alongs at the same time plus my own thing, and you know it's just. Are they beginner friendly? All these blocks from his thing? Right. Yes, this is, yeah. Beginner friendly. Now if I can get them back into my case. Did you make a tote with a braided block? Um, a tote with a braid. I don't know. I don't think I did. Are you okay. using one jelly roll? Or yes, this one? is just one jelly roll. And how many strips did you set aside? Eight. Just because. Okay, we're going to pull this over here. These cannot be used now. Those are way too small. Move that and put these up here. And we're going to see what four more we want on here. Because, again, it, I want to use not that one, not that one, not that one. Oh, that's exactly the same. We'll put this guy right here. Let's see. And, and so there's plenty of room for two sides. So two sides. I'm going to put this guy right here on this side. Okay. And then two more sides will be finished off in black. All right. Throw that over there. All right. I'm going to add these on here. I'm going to cut the salvage off, and this strip round should fit exactly. It's the next round that won't, or maybe it will, but that means I've gone around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. And got to break thread one time in every video. And the sucky part is my little bird threader had its final thread earlier and the snout came off or the little threading part, you know, the beak. That's the word I was looking for, not snout. <laughs> so now I have to thread this somehow with the actual threader on the machine which it just worked. So that was a miracle on the first try. I'm so glad. I love doing it. It's fun. And I love making the videos for you guys. I don't love the fact that I still mess up and I still have to rip, but don't we all sometimes? <laughs> I never said I was a professional. It's 
from one beginner to another. That's pretty much what I'm considering it. All right. Yeah, that next round is definitely going to have most of a piece. So I have to center it on there. Okay. Let's put this one on this side now. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right. The gray squares are four and a half inches, right? Yes, four and a half inch is what I'm adding. going to be quite a while of sewing it though guys it's going to be a long sew along so if you want to just advance yourself you can but if you want to just do it with me then just know there's a lot of videos that are going to be out <laughs> okay i'm going to press these and then i'm going to lay the next strip on so that I know where it needs to sit, because it's not going to be something I'll be able to save off of here. It's going to be not all the way. Okay. And don't forget, everybody, if you like my content, give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> All right, we're going to lay this here because I know that these next two pieces are not. We're going to use this one and this one. They're not going to be all the way. Exactly. So they're going to be cut off. And I'm going to leave the salvage on here because either way I'm cutting it off. So I'm just going to center my last piece on here, whether it's got a little bit hanging off on either side. Just like that. And I'm going to sew it on and then I'm going to do the same on the other side. It's going to get cut off anyway. So this will be the only time I have where I didn't cut the selvage off first. I'm just leaving it on there. And that way I have a little bit of a, a square end to work with when I put my last and final square on. flip it around. I know that I need to come down just a little bit because these strips are going to be the same exact size most likely. So I'm just going to go ahead and come down a little bit on here and then sew this one on this side. short on this end too but it's covering more than a quarter inch beyond my 
last um, seam. And what I mean by that is my end of my fabric is a quarter inch beyond my last seam, and that's perfectly what we want. And we're going to grab four more um, squares and attach those. And then I'm going to cut some gray to border it. And then I think I'm going to sew the last of all the strips together and create a pieced border. So this is what we have so far. It's pretty darn big. It is. When I said it's a giant pineapple, that's what we were actually making was a giant pineapple block. You want me to hold one side? Nope. We're going to do these corners real quick. So we need four more of our squares. One, two, three, four. That leaves me with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven remaining. So technically you didn't need six strips. You'll have some remaining squares left over. All right, I'm gonna lay this up here. We're gonna snowball these corners. The sides are still equal. Even though my fabric didn't come to the end, my sides on the side of it should still be equal. So I'm gonna sew that on there, corner to corner. So you can see the ends don't match, but I'm still lining up the sides with my square. So I'm laying my square on here and the two sides are equal. So that's what I'm looking for. On here, sewing it on. Huh? I have no idea because I, I'm gonna figure out what to do with the rest of all these strips and use some of this uh, fabric as the border. I'm gonna do a stopping border first. All right, all four sides are on. Let's trim and then press. And then we'll cut some more of my gray fabric because I allowed myself two yards, so I can definitely use it. Oh, those pieces don't come to the end, so I really can separate these. Those ones will just stay completely separate. I have tons of strips left, so not tons. I have like nine, ten strips left. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and keep those ones separate. I'm going to press it. Came out pretty darn good size so far. Yeah. Looks really good. All right, so let me show you what we have. That's so far. I'm going to go around it now with a two and a half inch. I'm going to cut two and a half inch strips for the gray. Obviously, there's going to be a seam on whatever side, so. If you're using like a matching fabric, um, then yeah. I have no idea. Let's see how big it is at this point. You can leave it this size at this point for a baby. Um, it is 44 inches at this point. Yeah, that would be a baby. Yep, 44, baby size quilt. 
I'm going to move all this out of the way. Move those out of the way. We're going to grab this and I'm going to cut five um, two and a half inch strips. Make sure that's fully lined up. It is, it is, nothing shifted. Good. All right, we're going to cut five two and a half inch strips. Are you going to do a piano key border? Yeah, I think I'm going to sew them all together in piano key. All right, so I'm going to cut five. So there's two. Four. And I saw that happening. What happened? Right there. Oh, I just skipped from the boo-boo in the thing. Oh. Roll that back. And cut another one. Yeah, it's just because there's dings and stuff in my mat. All right. Again, there's still plenty left here for binding. All right, we're going to sew these five strips together end to end. I'm going to cut the salvages off of them first, though. And then I'm going to stack them up and sew them end to end to end. Where did you learn most? Uh, I just self-taught. Um, and then in the beginning, like after the first like six months, I found Missouri Star Quilt Company. Where did you learn most of your quilting knowledge? And, um, after I found Missouri Star, I found Jordan Fabrics and it, the list kind of goes on from there. And that's how I learned as a self-taught slash YouTube taught. <laughs> in the beginning, it was horrible. But I was able to make quilts and they held together. So before I found all these companies. All right, all of my strips are stacked together. I'm just going to pull the bottom one off. And that means the next two are already right sides together. This is my little border trick that I do all the time. And then the next two after that will be right sides together and so on and so forth. I'm just going to chain piece them. So. How do you sew solid strips together if you sew diagonally? I don't get it. I do straight seams, not diagonal seams, if that's what you're talking about. So I'm just every two, and then there'll be one left, and that does not get sewn. All right, and now I have a continuous long strip for order. I'm going to grab my quilt top. Is the width of the uh, fabric from salvage to salvage? 42 inches usually. Okay. All right. Since this is, is... Is that salvage to salvage or is it opposite? The width of fabric? Yes. Measured from the salvage to the salvage. Yes. That was the question. It's measured from salvage to salvage. All right. My first strip that I add on here in this little seam right here, I know is going to land at the end. So I'm actually going to put it above a little bit, a few extra inches, and then I'll attach what I cut off to the other end if I need it. So I'm going above like six inches because I don't want the seam at the exact end of the quilt. I don't like the look of that. So I go above just a little bit. I don't make my borders to size to start. 
I don't have a problem with crooked or funky quilts usually when I do my borders this way. All right, so I'm just gonna fold it on top of itself and then cut it to the size of the quilt top. I'm gonna go to the other side and add, so I'm just making sure it's right sides together. I already have about six inches off of it, so my seam should not land at the end. on top of itself, trim it to the size. I have no idea. All right, I'm gonna press that back and then add the last two sides. Where's my starting piece? Did that fall to the ground or something? Again, I'm just pressing it away from the center. Oh, yeah, I didn't cut it off. That's what it was. <laughs> I'm like, where did it go? But I didn't actually cut it off yet. All right, now I can cut it off, because there it is right there. I thought I cut it off, but I didn't. There we go, in case I need it. All right, now to add two more sides, and then I'll have one border on here, and then I'll do a piano key border, but that will probably have to wait, because I think I've already gone to two hours. I'm getting really hot and sweaty. Oh, okay. The only I'm thing. Saying, if you're on a roll, you can do it. I'm not mad. Do your thing. Coming up to the end, folding it on top of itself. I stick my scissors through it. And just so that you can see, I'll finger press this back the way I do this. You can see it is still a perfectly squared corner. Well, I don't really ever have an issue with getting that 
on there like that. I know that you're supposed to measure the quilt in three spots and get the amount and blah, blah, blah. But I just don't do it that way. I've only done it like on three quilts. And that was because they were show quilts and I really wanted superb accuracy. And actually it wasn't even superb accuracy doing it that way. <laughs> it still seemed to have issues. So I don't mind skipping steps. Like accurate measurements, especially when I'm doing something like this. Okay. Hey, at least I got something right math-wise tonight. Five strips was exactly what I needed. What'd you say? Oh, thank you, Janice. That was great. Wonderful. Thank you. You will definitely go get good use. Like bacon. <laughs> if you guys didn't know already, <laughs> my thing is bacon. <laughs> I live on eating bacon. <laughs> I should probably have my own pig farm <laughs> just so that I could have fresh bacon. <laughs> no, <laughs> I used to have pigs. Remember, I had my black pot belly ones. The kid, no, I had two. We had two. Two pot bellies. No, didn't have a pot belly pig farm. And I don't think you eat pot belly pigs. I mean, you can, I guess, if you're starving, but I think it's different pigs that are edible. What about a pineapple triangle cor corner? Um, I could. Have you tried chocolate covered bacon? Uh, no, and I do not want to. I I've don't. Never even heard of such. If a thing. you guys didn't know this already, I don't eat much chocolate. Uh, it's very rare. Um, I don't know. Was it like two weeks ago, Scott uh, says something. They were having hot chocolate in the movie. He goes, "So, do you want hot chocolate?" And I was like. Yeah, I'll do a cup of hot chocolate. And the reason why I don't have chocolate is one dark chocolate, hot chocolate is actually not that great. I don't like it, but I do like dark chocolate candies. And the reason for that is I'm lactose intolerant. So milk chocolate, even though you're mixing your hot chocolate with water, milk chocolate, hot chocolate makes me so sick, but I love it. It tastes amazing. And yeah, so I don't even eat chocolate bars very often because milk chocolate makes me super sick. But too much dark chocolate is too sweet and I, because I have problems with my teeth. It just makes me like, okay. You know, I, I make those weird faces because it's way too sweet. All right, here's what I got so far. Border number one on my giant pineapple. Oops, let's just move that all out of the way for a moment so that I can lay this up here and you can see the most of it there we go right there so there is my giant pineapple quilt perfect size for a baby or someone that's short like me because if i put it to the floor look at this it's right there on the floor it literally comes up to my chest so i could lay with this on the couch and cuddle up because it's that perfect size for someone my height or smaller. <laughs> anyway, so there's that. I'm going to go ahead and make a piece. Um, I'll grab all these. I'm going to take all these, the long ones, and I'm going to sew them all end to end to end, even the short ones, end to end to end to end in groups of like probably four and then i'm going to sub cut into strips probably two and a half inch and then hook all those end to end to end and mix them up as much as i can and make a piano key border all the way around so that's what i'm going to do with all of the rest of this 
and even the super long strips, I'm gonna sew them together and just mix it all in. And then I will have a piano keyboarder, but I'm not gonna do that in today's video because I already hit two hours and I'm sweaty hot and I just need to relax. <laughs> so I will probably, um, tomorrow's filming day. So I won't want to, maybe, maybe. Well, they want to see this. Well, yep, I, you guys, them ask about it. you guys will see me make it. Don't worry. And if I don't do it during the week, then it'll get done on next Sunday, because I don't mind setting it aside till next Sunday. But it will get done, because that's what we're gonna do: is build a piano key border. Right now, I'm just separating these while I say my goodbyes, because I need to relax now. You guys know how it is. Well, actually, you don't because you're not on camera with me, but I'm super sweaty, super hot, and tired. All right. Anybody have any questions that I can answer? Concerns, comments, whatever have you? It should all work out perfectly. This is very fun. So I hope you guys get a chance to make something like this. So I have four different size stacks here. You can see from the ends. Actually, there's five because there's these size right here. And then there's the longer ones. So there's a few size stacks. And I'm probably going to sew them together in these groupings like this and then just hook them end to end. That way it's easier to cut and I don't have as much like random lengths at the end. And then obviously these little guys I won't need. <laughs> so there it is. That's what I'm going to do. So I'll do that on camera at one point, either during this week or by next Sunday. Hope you guys enjoy learning how to make a giant pineapple block. It's super fun. I'm telling you, you should try it. All right, I'm going to hold it up one more time while I say goodbye. So if you'll press the button, Mr. Scotty. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and hanging out, making this super large pineapple quilt. And I will see you in my next video. Good night. Bye.